Today's very special tutorial is brought to you by Corinthian Leather. If you're in the tradition of only the finest Corinthian leather, you're in the right place, my friend. I'm sitting on it. And who wouldn't love plush premium feeling Corinthian leather? Nobody that I would want to be friends with and take a road trip to Manitoba. So in this tutorial, we're going to create some type and we're going to center it center center so the tutorial is mostly about this type face um, setting here but let's make the text look more interesting first because everything is better when it looks good so let's pick a font that we want and uh, let's see uh, I'm gonna go with this font here make it bigger I'm gonna click and drag from the X to the Y so my scale is constrained and um, yeah so this is okay. Let's move it up a little bit. I want to create outlines around this. So I could create a stroke, but it's not going to give me the, the same effect. And uh, I need to select the type layer, hit the outline button. And my outline is always going to be, anything new is going to be on top. So let's drag it down below and let's give it a different color so we could actually see what we're doing. That will be sufficient and um, let's go into the shape tab of that sh that outline and make the width larger something like that will work now i could create another outline around the type but i could also create an outline around the outline and why that's interesting is is because if i want to do something with this like break it up a little bit um, i could click the trim and i could take some a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom, just like that. If I want to adjust the travel, I can get a different look. And uh, okay, I'm gonna go with that. And then with this selected, I'm gonna hit the outline button again. I need to drag this down to the bottom again. And I need to, uh, well, it's already at the top. So I'll just come in here and go to the, uh, the width and uh yeah so we've got some some issues with the uh, mitering on this one so i'm going to drag the miter down and now we got the uh we got the miter touch and I, I just brought it down even far enough to where it starts to chop off these corners that weren't weren't really a problem but uh i like the look of that i could change the uh color I might just leave it because I think that's kind of interesting effect with that gray. But uh, if we want, we could try. Actually, that, that's kind of interesting. I might put one more outline around this outline number two. I mean, I could go all day and I probably would never get bored of doing this, but uh, let's not make this a three hour tutorial. So let's drag this below everything and um, I'll bring up its width and uh, yeah, I'll change the color. Let's see if we get something that we like here. Okay, I'll go with that. I'm gonna reduce the, the miter. I'm gonna saw off that miter and uh, so you get to a certain point it might you see there's like a little too much mitering going on here because i brought it all the way down to zero bring it i have to bring it back up so we get because i kind of like that that much detail in here but i want this uh, to be clean over there and uh so we also have um trim on this we could adjust if we are so inclined Not saying that that looks good, but we have we have the option, so we could use it. We could also do it on this one too, just just in case. I think it's getting worse, but you know we ne we never know. So and uh, so we got trim on that one. We got the trim set on two, and we got it on three, and uh, yeah. So. 
it's up to you to do whatever you want. And now we are, well, let's clean things up a little bit here. So we got some repetition. So I'm gonna select these three layers and right click, go to group selected, we'll call these. So we are outlines and then I could collapse this and have a little bit of a cleaner, friendlier workspace down here. Okay, so the next thing is I want to now dynamically change this font. So I'll, I'll double click on my type and I go to this typeface here, right click on it, add array, typeface array, click on that. Now our, our type changed, but it's gonna change more, so it's not a big deal. If I wanna to get to it, I could click on this little arrow, double click on my typeface array, and this is it over here. Let's get this out of the way for now. And uh, I've got one slot here for one font, but I can make several of these. And now I have zero through five, so I have six different options for fonts. Now they're empty, so what I need to do is click on this plus sign here. I have the all tab clicked on, and I just start typing type. And when I type type, I got typeface highlighted down here. And I know I got six of these slots open and this is selected so I could just press enter six times and I got six of these. Just as easy as that. And so what I need to do is um, plug these. These are just all the, the things that I made here. I need to plug them into these down here. Uh, so one thing that I don't like is that um, these numbers aren't matching. I'm starting with one instead of zero, but it shouldn't be too confusing. I'll connect these up. So I'll click and drag from here into this first one. This I'll drag into the next one. Next. And there might be a way to do this automatically because this is a magical program, but I... It's not too bad to do these one by one. If I had a hundred, that might be a different story. And uh, yeah, so if I if I uncheck this, I could scroll through these different fonts, but they're all this same Lado font. And um, so let's start picking some different fonts here. I will um, try to find ones that are interesting just by looking at the name. I have no idea what I'm getting. Just trying to look for things that I know. That's not one that I wanted. And um, all right, so now if I uncheck this and I scrub these numbers here, I should get these six different fonts. Okay, so that looks like it's working. So this is a really interesting thing. I think there's a lot of different uses for it. If you have a client that had, uh, didn't make up their mind with uh, three or four different fonts that they might want, and you, you didn't wanna have to go back and change all your type layers after the fact, you could connect up things this way and then you could, have, you could have a whole project with this font and then they say they don't like it. And if you want a different font, you just change this number here or type it in, whatever you want. And uh, bam, everything is updated. You could also probably use this with the, the dynamic rendering feature, with, which I haven't tried yet, but it seems interesting. And uh, so if we want to um, kind of automate this, I could right click on index and I could go to add behavior and go to this oscillator. This basically gives you like a, a sign function. Click on this little arrow here and click double click on the text there. So uh, we want our minimum to be uh, zero and the maximum to be six. And uh, let me just scrub through here and see. So I, I think that's working. If I wanna be sure, I could look at the uh, the index here and you can see it's starting at three and when I scrub through here it's going to four five six and then back down to zero and then as I keep going it goes up so it keeps oscillating between zero and six back and forth and um, 
let's just check and see if that speed is okay. So, yeah, that, that speed is all right. I mean, I'm not going for readability per se, but uh, if I wanted to, I could go to, I think it's the time scale. Let's make it, uh, instead of one, let's make it point two. And let's see if that slows it down a bit. I think that does. I'm not sure why the outline is, is glitching out like that. I think it might be a beta thing because uh, like when I play it, you'll see it's glitchy pretty much all the time. And when I come in here and I go frame by frame, you could see it looks perfectly fine. So this might render okay, I don't know. Uh, but I have a feeling that you know once once they get out of beta, this is probably something that's gonna get cleaned up. But let's just say we're going for that glitchy effect. And uh, at least that's what you tell the client. And um, now what you do is, well, first of all, I wanna clean up a little bit and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to group again. And let's call this one fonts and we can collapse it. We could actually drag it to the bottom because it's not something that uh, needs to be a specific focus. And uh, all right, so now we, we've, got, we've got our setup and we can, um, everything is live and updatable and procedural so I could change this word and let's, let's actually do that. So let's group this and um, uh, right click, go to group and I'll call this, uh, I don't know, I'll call it line one or something like that. And uh, now I could take this and copy and paste, control C, control V, and uh, this will call line two. So click on it, press enter to rename it, and uh, I can drag it down. And now I can't, I thought I was able to do this one time where I was able to double click on the actual type layer to change it. But um, I just open up my folder here, find my type one shape, I'll, I'll double click on it. Uh, and we can call this typeface. And let's copy this one more time. Control C, Control V, and let's call this one. It also would be nice, and I'm sure that they're gonna do this, if you uh, duplicate a layer with a number that it increments it up. And uh, let's bring this down, typeface. This one we will all double click to make sure we have uh, the type layer selected. And this will be our array. And they're all gonna change at the same time. And for some reason now only the bottom one is glitching. Um, oh, the top one a little bit. So they all change at the same time. And uh, it's not a big problem because I could just come in to uh, this, open this type here, find my oscillator and alt double click on it. And um, we could we could change the time scale if we wanted to go a little bit faster or slower. We could also um, offset it. And uh, I think I'll do that. I'll go to line two, drill down here until I get the oscillator. I'll double click on that one. And let's go in the opposite direction. Okay. <clears throat> and I will play that. So yeah, it's it's a pretty pretty simple thing that I did here, but hopefully this this gives you some ideas about the uh, flexibility and things that you could do with the uh, typeface array.